All right, cool. We are live once again. It's good to be here. I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to share a little bit about my story as a voiceover artist, how I got started, um, what it's like, and also I'm going to give some tips and tricks to anybody who wants to learn the craft. <clears throat> so let's get started. Basically, my name's Chris. A lot of you guys know me, you followed me, you watch my content, you watch my tips and tricks, my YouTube channel. Uh, basically, <clears throat> I got started in voiceover around 2010, and from there it just grew and grew and grew. It got to the point where I could just do that solely and basically not have to basically work like at a retail store. I used to work retail. <clears throat> I used to uh, sell phones at a uh, cell phone store at a small cell phone store and uh, basically <clears throat> I've always liked theater arts I've always liked speaking in front of people and so that gave me the confidence to try it so I didn't have people say you know you have a nice voice I, I wasn't getting a lot of compliments about that it was just something that I really wanted to do something that excited me and something that I thought was fun so I knew I could do cartoon voices too so I thought you know why don't I just try this and little by little, I started finding customers, and my business grew. And now I have a pool of repeat customers, people that know me. I've built a reputation, and now it's great. Now it's great. I, I love what I do, and I'm just trying to help people now because ever since I shared my experience, people ask me questions on how to get started as well. <clears throat> And so that's what I want to do is I want to answer questions and I want to help you guys kind of follow in the same footsteps, learn voiceover and apply it to your life or whatever you want to do, whether that's for passion projects, side projects, um, uh, side hustles, full, you know, full time. If you want to really do this, then I'm the guy to ask. So ask me any sort of questions. Uh, let's see, looks like we got somebody that said, I am afraid to start. <clears throat> Don't be afraid. I mean, I think if you're afraid, you might be thinking you have to be perfect, your voice have to, has to be like A-level talent, and you have to have a really fancy booth and gear, but that's not true. I didn't start that way. A lot of people don't start that way. I mean, rarely anybody starts a pro, actually. Um... I started off using my the mic that was built into my laptop and from there I bought a actual USB mic it was a cheap one but eventually I was able to upgrade to something better so you do want to upgrade your gear as you go with time but the whole point is you don't have to have everything dialed and perfect from the get-go so <clears throat> don't let that hold you back start slow start with what you have practice you know, practice speaking with your voice, um, start recording, learn how to use the software. That, that will help you actually get started and improve your voice and your skills. <clears throat> you said, I have recorded some stories, but afraid to upload as podcasts. <clears throat> what is uh, holding you back? What is your fear? Let me ask you that. What is your fear about? Do you think people should judge you? Okay, we're back. Do you think people will judge you? Why are you feeling this fear? Because it's pretty normal to feel fear, um, but the thing is, you just have to tackle it head on. Tackle the fear, fear feel the fear, and little by little, that fear starts to go away. Sorry, it's a little tricky to get these... Go ahead and ask me questions. <clears throat> I want to do this full time. My fear is that there isn't that much out there. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but I have the setup and just haven't done anything yet. So yeah, if you have the setup, and the next step would be to start using it. Start using the equipment you have. Start practicing your voice. Get a demo reel and publish it online. There's many voiceover websites. And then over time, you'll get customers, you'll start up updating your demo reels. That's basically how I did it. 
is I knew you had to have a demo reel. <clears throat> I had already practiced speaking, so I made a demo reel. The first one was okay that I made, but I made it on my own, and after that, I improved it. So you can always update your stuff, so don't feel like whatever you do is permanent. Uh, don't know like it's just hesitation. <clears throat> I mean, it's normal to feel, feel that, but don't let that hold you back. Make your demo reel. Make, you know, learn piece by piece. Put aside some time, and it's worth it. You know, little by little, you're going to get there. Uh, what other questions do you have for me? And reach out, you know. Don't be afraid to DM me and ask what the next step is or what you have to do next. Yeah, I got to do something. Exactly. You got to take action. Nobody's going to take action for you. That is the one crucial thing is you got to you got to actually make this happen. <clears throat> it's a lot of little steps, but each little step it's in it of itself isn't that hard. So try not to see it as one big giant thing you have to do like I have to become a pro VO artist and make a full-time income. Don't see it like that. See it as, I need to practice a script tonight. I need to record the script tomorrow. I need to buy my first mic. See it as little steps like that, and little by little you'll get there. You will, especially if you have the determination and dedication to make it happen. <clears throat> Are you independent, or do you have an agent? I've been doing VOs, but have not been able to get into character voices for games or cartoons. <clears throat> so I'm not an agent personally. I'm independent. I don't have an agent. I've always been independent. I prefer it that way. Um, if you have an agent, they take a commission for finding you work. But from my personal research, <clears throat> they don't really find you too much work, depending on who you work with. But it's so much better to just find your own customers. You're not depending on somebody else. And once you're able to find customers and you have that skill, it's actually not too hard, it's not too bad, it's, it's actually nice. Um, but yeah, that's how I've done it. Maybe eventually I will look into finding an agent just so I can have that experience, so I can talk more about it and see how it goes. But I have looked at other people's experiences with agents and I have done my own research and I haven't been convinced that it's something worthwhile, so I haven't really got into it. Again, it's one, you have to find them, you have to audition for them, that takes time, you have to update your demo reel so that they're all really perfect, you have to be basically, um, <clears throat> you have to put your best foot forward, and then you have to follow up with your agents, and if they choose you, then you have to decide on the commission that they're going to take, and then after that, from what I have read, <clears throat> they don't bring very much work anyway. So it's just not worth the hassle. I haven't been <clears throat> very motivated to look into that. But maybe I will eventually if enough people want to know what that's like. But all of the work that I've done has been independent. <clears throat> it's Jane's stories. And I want to record like as I am narrating to my son and explaining to him. So I wanted to make it sound like not scripted but original as I talk to my son. <clears throat> exactly. Um, yeah, read stories to your son, record that, and that's good practice for you. Play it back, and maybe you can even use some of it for content. <clears throat> when you read to people like that, you're actually in a really good natural state because you're not reading to a microphone, you're reading, you're actually performing to a real person, and that in and of itself just makes you speak and act differently. So anytime that you have a person, it's gonna it's gonna help. But hold on a second. There we go. What else? <clears throat> Eventually you build that skill so that you can talk into the mic and imagine that it's a person. But until you have that skill, it's just easier to actually have a person there with you and talk to the person. Because 
that way you are being genuine, you're being natural, and that comes out in your voice. <clears throat> Again, there are so many different kinds of scripts available, so some people might not want a natural read and others might. So you have to deliver based on what the customer wants. But practicing that natural voice will help a lot. And eventually you'll gain control. And you can make something more commercial like this, a little bit more animated. <coughs> voice is a little off today. <coughs> I always wanted to do it, but get distracted. I'm actually a talk show personality on a show called Industry Unleashed. Could I use some of my sound bites as demo reels? Yeah, you can actually. Why not? That's creative. <coughs> What you really want to focus on is having pieces that customers will want because that's what a customer does is they're listening to your reel and imagining your voice in their project. So I'm not sure what you sound like in your radio show, but it would be fine for maybe one piece <clears throat> of your demo, maybe not the whole thing. <clears throat> I've just been coughing a lot, so that's why my voice is a little like that. <clears throat> the weather's been crazy. <clears throat> Get some pineapple juice. Really, I've never heard that. Might be something worth a shot. But uh, those are some tips there for um, your demo. You can use a little snippet of what you've done already. Um, but try to diversify it. Try to have different styles in your demo because you want someone to listen and be intrigued by different styles that you do and you want them to be able to find the style that they're looking for in that demo reel and if you just have one style it's not going to persuade everybody you want to have a, a good selection a good variety so <clears throat> try to try to give it some variety Solid, thanks. I can inbox you a link. You could listen in your spare time. Yeah, feel free to send me stuff, and <clears throat> I'll see. Uh, I'll see if I can check it out sometime. What else, guys? Let me know if you have any more questions. <clears throat> Do you have any more questions? Kind of a slower evening. It's like five thirty Pacific time, so I think a lot of people are still at work. But I did want to pop in here to answer questions, kind of talk about my experience. So how do you think I must start uploading? What kind of logo or should I hire someone for editing? You don't need a logo uh, for voiceover um, unless you're planning to do your own website. I could see it maybe then, but <clears throat> nobody's ever asked me for a logo ever for whenever I've done voiceovers. So shouldn't be a priority I would say they want to hear what you sound like they want to hear your voice and they want to work with someone who's friendly and professional so I would start there make sure that they know you know what you do send them your demo and then you can give them quotes you ask for the scripts and you can give them quotes based on the script <coughs> what's the best way to get started as a novice uh, you basically, there's different steps. The first thing is sounding good. You have to sound good. So that starts with, you know, reading. Reading fluently and reading flawlessly. Can you do that? Can you read out loud flawlessly? Then can you bring it to life? Can you do different variety styles? Can you, like, read in different styles? <clears throat> so start by just reading out loud. Can you read fluidly the whole way through without stopping or stuttering? Then... Can you do it in different styles, like a radio voice, a commercial voice, something more high energy and something more low energy? And you have to start giving your voice um, diverse sounds. Then you can actually start to record and eventually, once you feel like your skill and your sound has gotten good enough, you can put together a demo reel. The demo reel is what you can start to publish online so that people can listen to it and start to hire you for projects and they'll ask you if you can do a certain voice or if you can do a if you can send them a quote 
<clears throat> and you'll send quotes and you'll close deals and then you're doing it and then you're in so those are the main steps which pop filter is the one you use in your profile picture that one's called the yeah, the blue pop it's called the pop um, it's awesome it's a metal um, filter that is made by blue the company that makes the microphones so check them out it's called the pop really great pop filter I've actually found a couple so I've actually had a couple um, but they might be getting hard to find so if you don't see them anymore I don't, I don't know because it might be that the company start, stopped making them you can try to find another one that looks alike or similar they do make several metal pop filters can you show how you edit okay I can show that I can I can put that in a, in a future video or, or reel or TikTok. Okay, guys. Well, if you have any more questions, what's a good rule of thumb for quotes? X dollars hour or um, I personally do it per words. Uh, that's always worked the best for me. Uh, if you're doing audiobooks, you're gonna do it per finished hour. That means for every hour of audio. That's for long, long projects. So it depends on the length. And then the usage, is it going to be used for a commercial or radio? Then you would sell broadcast rights or commercial rights. But I charge per, per group of words, per every 100 words, or per every 50 words is what I currently charge. And then on top of that, I charge commercial rights or broadcast rights, depending on the use. And if they need it quickly, I can um, up, upcharge to a one-day delivery. There's a, that's option available um, but I might make a chart that calculates how much you should charge someone based on your experience and based on the word count so I might actually make that because a lot of people want to know how to charge a customer and it would de it would be a different price if you're a beginner than if you're an expert so maybe I'll just make like an Excel chart where you can just type in the numbers and it'll tell you look you should be charging this for this project maybe I'll do that <clears throat> Do they need ups and downs in audiobook or same pitch overall? Um, it depends. Every person's different. For the most part, they want a consistent, kind of easy to follow along read, especially for chapter books. But it depends on what the author wants, and they're going to communicate that with you. But, I mean, listen to a couple of audiobooks, and you'll kind of get the idea. It's like basically a very just pleasant, not too over-exaggerated, not too low energy. It's just kind of like a engaging, but not too overdone. If I can if I can explain myself and it's not too casual kind of like how I'm talking to you but it's more professional like you're actually reading a book but it still has life in it kind of like this and it has a flow that's pretty consistent that stays the same throughout the whole book chapter two kind of like that thank you that pop filter is beautiful it's a great idea don't want to be too cheap or too expensive yep exactly you don't want to be too cheap or too expensive but with time, you can start to raise your rates as well, especially once you start getting customers and you start realizing, hey, this is working great. I'm getting a lot more people. You can start to raise your rates. That's what I did, and eventually uh, you'll find a spot where you're really happy with it. So that's what I encourage. I personally, I started off really low, probably lower than I should have. Um, but that's okay in the beginning because you're still practicing anyway, and you're going to get reviews. So no biggie you're getting experience you're making money and then you can raise your rates with time what's been your favorite project uh, I've gotten some where I've done arcade machines those are always really fun I love arcades I love video games so I get really into them and I especially love looking up the projects online and seeing the finished result so those are my personal favorites <clears throat> Well, guys, thanks for the questions. Thanks for tuning in. That is all the time we have for today. Um, you guys feel free to DM me or check out my bio for more information on how to learn how to do this. I put together some programs that teach you from start to finish how you can get started doing this. The software, there's tutorials. It's in the link in my profile. So until next time, guys, see you later.